and hello YouTube, GSMAM Smart here, and in today's video we're going to teach you how to create a double exposure effect in GIMP and some really cool ways how you can make this look awesome. That's coming up next. What's up guys, GSMAM Smart here, today we're another brand new video for tutorials with GS, and thanks for stopping by for another one of my videos, glad to have you. And if you have me new to the channel, new to my videos, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel, plenty of other GIMP tutorials, plenty of other audio editing, video editing, image editing tutorials, we have tutorials on the Adobe products, Audacity, GIMP, all kinds of cool stuff, so if you're interested in tutorials, creative design, or any of that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as that post notification bell, so you can stay up to date with all the most recent videos. So today's tutorial is all about double exposure. Exposure. I think we're getting close to about 50 tutorials in our GIMP series and this is actually a really cool tutorial as you can see here is a example of one I made here is another example of one I made essentially what you're doing is you're getting a background image exposing it through another image and you have the option to either have the rest of the image come through a white background or you could just uh, have it be completely white like that some people like to do either or so Really nice effect, it's very easy to do as well, and there's a lot of flexibility of the backgrounds you can use, the kind of cool things you can use. As you can see here, I have a tagline at the bottom, here I have a quote card, so a lot of different ways you could use this type of design. Let's go and get started from scratch so you can see how this works. So all I've done is opened a picture of Emma Watson here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and increase the size a bit because I want to work on a larger image. So let's go ahead and work on a 700 height image like that. And the first thing you want to do is you obviously want to find your two images. So I already have a background. I already have my subject here. I'm going to go ahead and grab my magic wand tool and just start taking out the background. Now, if you're working on a PNG image, uh, this will work perfectly fine for you. If you're not working on a PNG image, you have to do one more step and that's to go right click on your image and click add alpha channel. Because if you do this, you see you'll get your background as a black or a white. So make sure you right click and click add alpha channel. That way when you do this, you actually get your alpha channel in the background. And just use your magic wand tool to sort of get the areas of the hair that you don't want. The hair can be a bit tricky. Sometimes you might have to zoom in a bit to get the parts here. Uh, sometimes it's easier than other times. As you can see here, it's taking me a bit of a bit time. So it doesn't need to be perfect. In fact, I think for this tutorial, I'm not going to make it perfect. You can also use your eraser tool. If you're looking for a tutorial on how to render out images, I do have a tutorial, a fairly old tutorial also, showing you the different ways you can render out images from their background using several different methods. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and click the link in the description or the card on screen right now that will bring you to that video and you can learn a lot of the different methods on how to do this. Once you think you're done, a cool trick that you can do is you can uh, create a new layer and depending on uh, what the background originally was, you can create a white and bring that white underneath here and you can sometimes see what's left over and you can grab your eraser tool here. Make sure you stay on your uh, person layer here. Make sure you have the white layer in the back and then you can sort of just erase what you see left here. What you can also do is get a black background and then you can also see what's left here. Grab your eraser tool and sort of fine tune it, but make sure you erase on the person here and not on the black background. And that can sort of help you fine tune things um, also, you could get rid of strands of hair that you don't want to use or things that you don't want to use in your double exposure effect. So that's an option as well. Uh, you can also use a combination of uh, contracting the selection or also even feathering the edges. All of that we go over in our rendering tutorial. So I think this will do for now. Then we want to go ahead and grab a new layer, make sure it's white and bring that underneath. So if you did this already, then great. If you haven't done it, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and right click your object or your person or whatever you're using. Go down to alpha to selection, then go to your white layer here. Control X or command X in the Mac that will cut out a hole here. And sometimes this will also give you a good idea of what is left over, what's not left over. And you can always just erase things with your eraser on your main image and you can fill things in with white on your white background for things that you don't want to see that are currently on there still. Make sure you have selection set to none though. That way you can color over the white 
or you want to take things off, go ahead and grab your background layers. I have several background layers here, so I'm just going to go ahead and drag them in here like that. And that'll work fine. You can resize these as well if you want to resize them. So for example, I can go here and click scale layer. I can right click scale layer and I can set a value or I can go and grab my scale tool from the left side here. I can zoom out. And if you want to resize this proportionately, make sure you hold down control and you can resize this proportionately to, uh, to the image here. If you want to test this out with multiple backgrounds, you can use multiple backgrounds. You just have to repeat the steps. I'm going to go ahead and use this background right here. Make sure you drag this background to the bottom so it's the last background. And then you'll see we start to see a bit of a double exposure here. However, the next thing you want to do is make sure you uh, make your person visible again. Then go to the layer mode up here. Go to multiply and that will make that effect. Then we want to go to colors, desaturate. Make sure you have the first option selected then press OK. That'll turn our layer gray basically like so. Then go to colors one more time and go to curves this time and drag that top node here. We're going to uh, lighten the lights. If you don't know how to use the curves effect, we do have a tutorial on how to use the curves effect and do color correction with it. Go ahead and click the link in the description or the card on screen right now so you can learn how to do that. But essentially we're just grabbing the whites and the lighter colors, drag them to the middle, boosting them up a bit. You don't want to boost them too much because you'll start losing some of the shadowing and dimensions. So just pay attention to how you're doing this and how it affects your image. That's fine right there. We'll press OK. And from here on, we're about almost done. Now you can also go ahead and lower the opacity here of your main layer. So we can go bring it to 80% and that brings the background through a little bit more. We can also go to our white layer here and lower this also down to 80% or 70%. And you can start seeing how that can make a difference as well. The lower you go, the more of your background shows. At 100% opacity, nothing shows. So 80% I think looks really good. Another technique that some people like to do is if you go on your person layer here, you grab your eraser tool, you can actually erase parts that you don't want to show. So for example, if you don't want the jacket to show here, and you can actually erase that and you'll see more of the image come in the background. For some designs, that looks pretty good. For other designs, it doesn't look that good. So I'm actually just going to uh, control Z to go back. I like the way this looks. You do have the option to erase some parts of your person or your object and to allow more exposure to come through from the background by erasing certain parts. So you can do that as well. Some people also like to uh, flip the background vertical or horizontal and you see you get a different effect here. So a lot of experimentation you can do here. You can also move things to the side if you want, like I've done in this one over here. Um, you can also go to your background layer here and you can play with the curves here. You feel like it's not light enough, you can boost the light. So you feel that's not dark enough, you can darken the darks or lighten the darks. As you can see, you can get a lot of different effects here. So this actually looks pretty cool. If we go ahead and do that. Um, and then what I want to do, you can also move your layers. So if you want to move uh, these two layers here, we're just going to go ahead and lock them both like that. Make sure you click and then hold control. That way it stays at the top and the bottom. And we can start moving this. I think it looks good right around here. And then what you can do is right click your white layer, layer to image size. That way the layer will get extended. Then we can grab a brush tool and we can just brush over uh, what's not white here. Like so. And then what you can also do if you want to get rid of the strand of hair here, say uh, you didn't want to, you don't want to have this be a part of it. What you can do is you can go to your person layer here and you can just erase this with your eraser, not with your white. You can erase this with your eraser. You can get a fairly big brush, lower the hardness on it, and that'll work fairly well like that. And then you can go to your white layer here, grab your brush or a pencil, and just start coloring in with white. Once again, a very big brush that doesn't have a lot of hardness on it. And you can just do something like that. And there it looks a bit uh, cleaner. And this looks almost like we had over here. The only difference here is I didn't lighten the darks as I did. And then if you want, you can add your text box. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this text box, paste it over here. And then we, all we got to do is grab it, 
drag it over. And when you look at that, that's basically what we had in the other image. Uh, when you copy and paste, you want to make sure you anchor your layer though, or you want to add it to a new layer. So right click to new layer and there we go. And there you have it. As I said, there are other ways you could do this with different images. Uh, here I have one, which also looks really nice. Uh, this one is with uh, the following background, this one right here. So also a really nice one that looks pretty good. Another one is with this one right here. Uh, it'd be better if we would probably flip this around. We can flip it like so. That looks a little better. So a lot of different backgrounds you can use, a lot of different experimentation you can use. Uh, I showed this one because I thought it looked the best. So hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial. Hopefully you understood it and hopefully your designs will look a lot cooler. Now that you've learned the double exposure method, if you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like. If you have a comment, confused about anything, something's not working for you, you have a suggestion, you have another tutorial that you want to see, leave a comment down below. All the comments I'll be responding to and reading as time progresses. And if you want to check out our other GIMP tutorials, go ahead and click the card on the screen right now. I have the playlist link. We have about 50 GIMP tutorials. You can learn a lot about the program. If you're new to GIMP, a lot of things you can learn how to do and it'll help you get on track to learning how to use this program to the best of its abilities. I also have the link in the description. And if you want to check out a recent video, go ahead and click the annotation here. Want to check out a similar video to this one, click the annotation here. Want to subscribe to the channel or my other channels, click the annotation here. And if you want to donate a dollar to my Patreon page, you can click the annotation here. That's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching as always. And this is GSMAM Smart, and I'll be back soon. You think? Don't go anywhere.